Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com and I have a box of smartware here. And I gotta tell you, the box is not big enough to contain what's inside. For those of you who have always been saying, Mr. Ticks, these watches are too small. I want it huge. The bezels are too bland. I want them bright. I want them bold. I want them big. The bands, they're just too skinny. I want a massive rubber band. Well, for those of you who like that and this um, carbon fiber look in your watch, we have an entirely new design. Yeah, we do. Look at this. What is it? Let's talk about it. Comes to us from Gear Vita. Gear Vita's good at sending us some unusual stuff. I really applaud them for that. It's a microware. It's now the H8. We've seen the whole H line here. We got a lot of different reviews, and microware also is kind of out there in different areas. Um, we have a 5 megapixel camera in this uh, 4G watch and a bunch of other stuff. By the way, check the show notes down below this video for a buying link to click over here and pick it up from Gear Vita. Okay, there you go. What's inside? Um, it's a 4G um, capable uh, smartwatch. It's using the MTK6739V. Now, I don't know anything about that one. Uh, what the... 6739V is. I know the 6739 is the minimum required to do the always time display, you know, that analog black and white screen we've seen. And as I understand it, this watch does have it. So we'll take a look at that. It's your standard 400 by 400 um, AMOLED uh, screen with, again, they say a, a five megapixel camera. Now that could be up interpolated from two megapixels. Most likely it is. That's uh, what's the standard camera module. There's the different bands that it uses for um, communication and all the different features that are in it. Now, it says it has a sleep monitor. I'm seeing that, analysis for sleep quality. I have not seen that in a smartwatch, an Android smartwatch before, so I'll have to look for that one. And what else? 630 milliamp hour battery. That's pretty decent. Of course, it's a pretty big watch. And there's its size and weight and everything. I'm going to verify a little bit of that for you, too. Okay, so it's an H8. That's what's the name of it. And inside the box, we find the obligatory four-pin connector charger. Uh-huh. And that should just snap in place. 50-50 chance. But I'm more than 50-50 wrong when I do it. It doesn't hold the watch because it's a heavy watch. Okay, there, it barely does. You're not going to do it that way anyway. I just do that to demo uh, how strong the connection is. And that's it. We don't have a uh, screwdriver, although we do need a screwdriver to open up the back, which is where you would slide the SIM card. Whole different arrangement on this one. It really looks like it should be waterproof by the build quality. But I didn't notice waterproofing on the uh, spec sheet. So that's an unanswered question. Obviously, the bands are not removable. Antennas are in here, and you can even see the, uh, the pattern on the, on the edges. Uh, what else can I tell you? That there's a manual in here in Chinese and English. Notice the color on this one. You can get that with different colors, that little stripe. Blue and I think red maybe. And, of course, this one is just plain gray. It subdues it just a little bit. Here's the English side. We'll flip through this for you in case you see things I don't cover. Now, I want to make a note to you, and it's, it's been really crazy with this one. These are backward from what we're used to. Um, yeah, the home screen, I'm used to clicking the top, and it'll go off and go on and all that kind of stuff, and it's acting as the back button now, um, even though it's painted red like you'd think the power button would be. So anyway, um, we'll see that in action here, but just a little notice on that. It's backwards a bit. Charging. Um, okay, some more stuff. It's going to tether like they all do to the WII Watch 2 app. And we're going to have some information in an upcoming video 
uh, amplifying about that app and some conflicts that we're finding. Um, not good news, unfortunately, but I don't want to weigh it down on a, a watch review here. So we'll mention it under the video where I did a full exhaustive review of the Y Watch 2 and also might do a separate video on it um, here shortly. But just to let you know, that's coming. Here's some more fine print and the rest of the manual is all in Chinese. So as we always do, we'll charge it up, clear the field here, turn it on and give you a look. As I mentioned, the buttons are backwards. So you think you push the top one to do the power because it's covered, colored red and you don't get any response. You have to press the bottom button on this one. A little bit different. Oh, yay! Oh, hey guys, look at this. For all of you who have this love for a black border, we've got not only a massive bezel, but a beautiful black border as well so that you're awesome huge smartwatch when you put it on will carry that feel that it's even bigger because it's got that small little screen on it boom he says boom there we go <laughs> all right ah uh, yay I, I love it when we get a great big bezel like this because i get all your guys's comments about how you can't stand it just like the ones with the flat tire oh my goodness all right all right i i hear you but what can i do about it they make these things um they're all the same android um screens basically you've got like three different type and that's about it uh, so far you got the little flat tire. I call it uh, more of a, a low, um, what low air tire, right? The bigger flat tire on a really big uh, watch screen, and then the 400 by 400 screens like this, all of which have an edge. Some of them bring the bezel all the way up to that little section, the last pixels, and so it looks like it's edge to edge. But in reality, underneath it, it's just like this. Some of these watches choose to go ahead and go right out to the edge of the electronics that's in the black space and then build the watch up to there and just make it larger. And that's what's happening here. As you can see in my relatively average male arm, it's a big watch. It's a, it's a, a, a very beefy one, a, a very thick one, and we'll get into that. But right now, I want to run through just the basics if you've never seen an Android 7.1.1 watch before, then watch another video because I have gone over this a hundred times. You have weather widgets and music widgets, a clean thing that'll sweep up your RAM. You've got all these different icons. If you don't know what they are, um, symbolically, uh, they're easy to figure out. And you've got this overall thing shows you your power level, whether you have a SIM card in it and a 3G or 4G, and whether you're Bluetooth tethered to your watch using the Y Watch 2 app, which we have a whole separate review on setting up, so we're not going to go into that today either. Here's your step count average bar chart over the week. This is today's step distance and calories burned, all tied to the pedometer inside. So there's a few demarcations that are different between these watches. I'm going to look at those for you right now. We swipe over, we get to the uh, app drawer, right? Swipe over once more, you get to the fitness section. A demarcation is whether the fitness will tie into GPS so that your runs and walks will be more accurate. You'll know if it works by starting it up and getting this box. And it says you've got to turn on GPS in order to go further. When you do and you activate it, you're going to see it looking for GPS. It's going to give you the countdown. It's going to run. And this little blue icon is going to flash. If your Android watch doesn't do this when you're in fitness, then it's just using the step counter. When you're done, you come over here. And if this says finish, you got the old version. If it says long over, like this is a long overdue, Mr. Ticks, you go on and on and on about this. Um, let's get over it. Uh, we press and hold. Long over means you see a little circle going around it. You have to hold it down in order to stop the whole thing. And that is 
how that fitness app works if it's been updated. So yes, check mark for this one. This one uses GPS integration. How about camera? Uh, we go down here to our camera. It's a side camera. I wiggle my fingers. Yeah, I got my ring on again. I swear I'm going to be doing a video on this really soon. This is an incredible ring. Let's take a picture of it so that I can show you something information about it. In the details, 1920 by 2560, your standard 5 megapixel uh, size, but guaranteed it's a 2 megapixel camera that's up inter interpolated to that level. I can double tap to zoom it in, double tap to zoom more, double tap and it goes back. And then this was, it was one that's different on different watches, whether you have pinch and zoom. We do not. If I did, two fingers would zoom in on the picture. So thumbs down on the pinch and zoom. Now, as we found out in the Janus, which was recently released video, there's also a new feature coming for the camera. So let's get back to the camera. There we go. And that is whether or not we have um, digital zoom in the camera itself. So to do that, I put my finger on the screen and I go up and down. If it has it, it would zoom in on the picture up to four times. If it doesn't, as this one does not, then it doesn't have that feature. Another thumbs down, but that's okay, because so far the Janus is the only camera on the market. What's the Janus? It's a uh, two camera, like the uh, Thor 4 Duo, one on the side, one on the front. Uses a really large 1.6 inch uh, screen, uh, and it has zoom on the camera itself, which is really handy and better than zooming the picture after the fact, because you can literally zoom in on the subject you want to take the picture of, and that picture will then be at that zoom level. And then I presume you could double tap and double tap again and zoom in even deeper on that. So that's what we want to cover on camera. Uh, nothing else is different in these watches that I can think of. Oh, here we go. This is new. A barometer. Look at that. Okay. Whoa. Well, look at that. I've got relative height. Huh. There's the barometric pressure. All right. And this is the relative height. So I presume I can reset it. And now if I go hiking, it's going to track as I go up or down. And I guess the tiniest change in barometric pressure will adjust it by how many meters you are above or below your location. Again, its height is kind of calculated from the thickness of the air, right? The pressure of the air. So it's relying on barometric pressure. But it must have one of those sensors in here, which is new. Double thumbs up. That's cool. That's something really new. What was the other thing? It said sleep time, right? Um, we saw that as an app. Where in the heck is that? Let's look through the whole app drawer. Contacts, phones, and messaging is for making and receiving calls. Yes, you need a SIM card in it. No, you can't do this tethered to your phone. Uh, Android 7 uh, watches do not uh, allow Bluetooth calling, they, they refer to it as. Um, uh, browser and downloads and your calendar and clock is where you set your alarms. We looked at camera galleries where you see the pictures. Music player, sound recorder. We haven't heard the sound. I know, I know. We're still looking for the sleep stuff, but let's try this. Hello, everybody. I'm recording with the sound recorder. And yeah, I talk a little louder than normal, but I'm still about a foot away or so from the, um, the watch itself. I'm going to hit done. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit here for the file list, and I'm going to play it. Oh my gosh, I can't hardly even hear it. Okay, you know what? We're going to take one second. One second, I'll be right back. I'm going to leave here. I'm going to come back up to settings. We're going to look at sound. And we're going to adjust these volumes. There, you can kind of hear the volume level. This should be under media volume. And so now we're going to press and hold. Now, see, I press and hold the top, and I get back. That's not what I want. I want to press and hold and get to the recent tasks. This is how I can quickly leave the settings and switch back to the sound recorder. And now I can go to that file list and play it again, Sam. Hello, everybody. I'm recording with the sound recorder. And yeah, I talk a little louder than normal, but I'm still about a foot away from the sound recorder.
I don't know if you can hear that or not because of the way the camera and microphone and everything changes voicing, but I'll give you my estimation. It's definitely on the low side at full volume. It's not very intelligible, um, not, not very loud, which probably implies videos would be that way and possibly phone calls um, as well. I have heard louder watches for sure. So mm, there you go. Anyway, that was the sound recorder right there. We're still hunting down the sleep monitor. There's heart rate, file manager, weather, voice, play store, maps, assistant, the barometer. Fitness is the same fitness as we got when we slid over to the side, but it's got pretty color pictures. And then there's an app store. Maybe we got to download it from here. Facebook and Twitter and WhatsApp and YouTube are in here. Um, nope. And we do have, that was the play the App Store, which is different than the Google Play Store, but we do have that. But from everything I can see, there is no sleep app on here. And we haven't found a good third-party app either to run on Android watches. So that's probably an error in the overall listing. All right. We haven't looked at watch faces. Let's do that real quick. Here's a, a really nice bright edge to edge as far as the edge goes. Uh, that can show you that black barrier. You have to kind of see the reflection of the actual bezel in the light on the glass to get a feel for where the, um, the actual uh, image starts. A few more interesting watches. Here's something new with the balloons. There's that balloon starting. It's like a background picture with a digital uh, overlay. A few more watch faces. I'm not going to bother to go into them. Well, there's something where the second hand is going all the way around. And if you get the right watch face with these alternating white and black sections, it doesn't make it look like the screen is really small within the overall watch. So you can kind of mask it, if that's the right word. You can use a dimmer type of an overall uh, screen. Uh, again, looking at the bezel, it's a tachometer design of sorts with uh, bold numbers around the edges and a few more watch faces. I have not put any custom faces in here, but it's easy to do. Same as all the other Android watches. They work just fine. However, I did add, and look at all these. These are a bunch of the old stock watch faces that used to live on the Google, what was it, the G Plus community? And um, even before that, the XDA forums, all of these. My gosh. Okay, I hope they got permission for them. Uh, here's an interesting one that shows some fake shadowing on it. That looks like it's 3D or the bezel is a lot deeper than it is. Um, tricks of the trade. Same thing here with the, the uh, shading on the side. And... There's a lot of watch faces in here. Very simple, date, time, bright white. If you want something uh, to use as a flashlight, a few more. Some of these I haven't seen. I don't recall that one, for example. Don't go away, because we're going to measure this thing. Look at that droid. Oh, wow. Too bad the propellers don't turn. But we've got an, uh, a droid. I mean a drone. <laughs> we got a drone watch face, finally. Okay. This one we um, see common on a lot of the fitness apps. Uh, and then this one with the little minus sign, you see that? That's one I added from the little plus symbol, which is where you go into the server and you can download all kinds of, of watch faces. You hit that little curly uh, arrow after you download some of these to make sure you reset all of these things. This one is where you can create a, your own watch face with your own picture. And, um, and add a, a digital time to it. And this is uh, that stock face now that is usually what you see in the always time display, which we haven't tested yet because it actually is on this watch. This is all lit up. This is an actual watch face. See, I've got the uh, power level on this one too. Um, the, the Collins clan designed this. Pierce and Tim Collins put this one out. I'm gonna turn it off, but not with that button, with that button. And in just a moment, three, two, there you go. You see the really subdued, dim analog watch. It's basically the same watch face without the time on it. Oh, it lit up because I'm in that twist your wrist thing. And it also lights up if you have it at just the right gravity level. 
there it went back out again. So you get the feel for both of those, um, the brightness levels. And of course, this brightness can be changed when you get in here. You have full brightness, like that, and you have dimmest level, like that. So if it's nighttime and you have it set on dim level, and then you turn the watch off and it goes into ambient mode, there's not a whole lot of difference between those two. But definitely big difference uh, when you go to the brighter levels. Okay, well, you've seen it on, right? It is a thick band, very thick, but it's pliable, it's soft. It, uh, it won't lay like flat with the, the sides coming down. Um, but it's not like super stiff either. But you don't want to bend the antenna areas too much. Uh, you don't want to tear those inside of there. Let's grab this and confirm the weight. It's kind of washed out on here, but where they said it was 60 um, grams, it actually comes in at 88. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's, it's heavy because of the plastic. How many of you guys take your shoes off before you get on the scale when you go to the doctor's office? Only if you're overweight, right? Yeah, still 88. Can you see that? I think you can. Well, that's going to change it anyway. Uh, 88 uh, grams, very heavy watch. And uh, as far as dimensions go, let's make sure we're in millimeters and zero are calibers. I'm just really curious, how big is this sucker? Especially how thick is it? Across the camera, we're at 53. Thickness is, is it gonna be an award-winning camera? I mean, watch, 16.67. Let's get it right in here. 16 and three quarters. You're probably calling it 17 to be safe, 17 millimeters. Um, size, grab a different face, and um, yeah, even even the diameter of the screen itself here is 50, I'm sorry, 52 millimeters. So it's a large, heavy man's watch for sure. But if you really want to make that kind of a statement and style, it works. It definitely works. So consider it. Gear Vita. It's got the GPS integration with the fitness. It's uh, got the always time display capability. It's got a uh, five megapixel camera, they say. Doesn't look like waterproof, but should be splash proof. I don't see an IP rating on it if there is. Oh, whoa, I just saw it. I am so sorry. I apologize. IP68. So we can dunk this one underwater. Yeah, it looks like a good solid build, especially where that SIM card is supposed to go. That It's not one of those little plastic things you pop off. So it's got this ceramic base going for it. The heart rate diodes are right in there. It even has a quality assurance pass lab label on it. Other than the sound being low um, it, and it being really big, <laughs> it's, got, it's got a lot going for it as an Android smartwatch. Okay, enough for now. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. Again, we're at smartwatchticks.com, and uh, we appreciate your thumbs up or likes on the video, and of course, sharing anything on social media about our channel is very, very welcome. It'll help us uh, build viewership. A lot of people would watch if they knew we were here. The art of letting them know we're here is something I really rely on you guys for help. All right, we'll see you again soon.